Hello crafty friends, it's Alicia of the Call Me Crafty Owl YouTube channel and it is time for challenge number five in my No Spend November challenge and giveaway series. I hope you'll stick around, see what the new challenge is and see what I'm going to create. Thank you so much for stopping by today. If this is your first time to my channel and you're going to want to get in on the giveaway, make sure to click on that subscribe button below and ring that bell for notifications. If you're already a subscriber and regular viewer, welcome back. I'm so glad that you're here again. During the month of November, I am trying to use what I have in my stash and not spend anything new on crafty items. I am giving myself little challenges every few days and I hope that you will join with me and get entered to win a fabulous prize. Here in just a minute you'll see a quick overview of what the month will look like and what you can win, but make sure to watch the video linked in the description box below at least one time if you are going to enter because it has all of the details that you'll need. I've seen quite a few of you sharing your creations already online for the challenges, but I haven't seen very many links back on the videos. That is one step that you have to do if you want to be entered to win. So again, make sure you go watch that video when you're done here. If I were you, I would probably figure out how I was going to play along, like either on YouTube, Instagram, or Facebook, and take specific notes on that section and just keep those handy. In the description box of that video, I do have some timestamps, so you can always refer back to it. But yes, definitely watch it at least once. But for now, here's just a little overview of what this month will look like. During the month of November, I will be putting out challenges for myself and for my subscribers. You can play along on YouTube, on Instagram, or on the brand new Call Me Crafty Owl Facebook page. At the end of the month, I will tally up those entries and one lucky subscriber will win the now sold out Gina K Designs Sparkle and Shine card kit. Don't forget for all of the official rules and details to check out the video linked in the description box below. Also in the description box are the hashtags that you'll need to use for today's challenge on YouTube and on Instagram. Don't forget on Instagram to go ahead and tag me at call me crafty owl. And if you're going to participate on Facebook, make sure in the description of your photo that you add your YouTube username. Challenge number five is called snow way man. And I want you to create a new project using snow in some way. For my card today, I thought I would make a shaker card because I love a shaker and snow goes great with shaker cards. I found this set with coordinating dies in my stash and I just love the jars and I thought that would be perfect for a shaker shape. The stamp and die set is from Avery L and it's called Warm Wishes. I actually won this in a giveaway but I haven't inked it up yet and I'm excited to. Over here on the left, I have a couple different elements for my shaker. I got out some little white styrofoam balls and then some tiny iridescent snowflakes. Over on the right is my snowflake embossing folder. I thought I might add that to the card. If I do add anything later on in the video, which I probably will since I don't have any paper out here in front of me, I will be sure to let you know in the voiceover. But if I ever leave you with any questions, make sure to leave those in the comment section below and I'll get back to you just as soon as I can. Let's get crafty. Because some of my stamping is going to need a little extra time to dry today, I did go ahead and do that first. The first thing I'm going to stamp is going to be the jar that will be my shaker window. I am stamping this onto a scrap of clear cardstock with black stays on ink. For my card today, I am going to use this smaller jar from the set, and I just kind of centered it in that scrap of clear cardstock because I do need some area around the edge to later adhere that to the back of a piece of cardstock. 
Once I have that lined up where I want it, I go ahead and get it inked up with the stays on and stamped onto the clear card stock. I did pull out my Misty in case I needed to stamp twice, but the first time for this one worked just fine. Next, I grabbed the Let It Snow sentiment from the stamp set. I aligned that in the bottom right of my jar and I got that stamped. Now this I did go ahead and ink up and stamp twice just to get a nice crisp image. I swapped out my Stays on Black ink for Memento and I brought in a scrap of Strathmore Bristol Smooth for the next images. I stamped the two smaller trees onto the white cardstock because later I will be coloring these with real brush pens and I find that this cardstock works best for me when I use that. These can just be stamped anywhere on that piece of cardstock because I will be die cutting it later. I wanted to make a snowy background for my jar, so I got out a scrap of blue cardstock and I'm going to be using those three smallest snowflakes from the kit to stamp in white onto this blue scrap of cardstock. Now this white ink does take a while to dry, so that's why I wanted to do my stamping now so this could be set aside. For this, I use my Sizzix pad. Since the clear stamps don't have any cushion on them, this helps get a nice clean impression. Now it's time to get my trees colored in. To do this, I am using Zig Clean Color Real Brush Markers, and the first marker I use is number 44 Deep Green. And I just went around the outside of the tree where the bows are, and then I made some little branches kind of where they might be on the side that was facing you. This then I just blended out with number 98 Pale Dawn Gray, and I wasn't too exact like if I had white areas on the image when I was blending I just left that because you know what it's snowing and some of those branches might have caught some flakes I did the same thing for the second tree and then I brought in number 62 dark brown to color in those trunks Once those were colored in, I got out the coordinating dies and ran those through my little die cutter. I just used a couple scraps of Scotch Blue removable tape to hold the dies in place while I ran that through. You'll see later that I reused these same pieces for another die cutting. I brought in my trimmer and a couple scraps of cardstock. This blue piece got cut down to four and three quarter inches wide by three and a half inches tall. The white got cut to four and a half inches wide by three and a quarter inches tall. Now it was time to do the die cutting for my shaker window. And I wish somebody would have been here to stop me because this is gonna be my first oopsie in the video. You'll see there that I placed my jar down with the Scotch Blue removable tape and ran it through my die cutter. Unfortunately, you'll find out later, this wasn't my smartest move, but you know what? We're gonna work with it. Once that jar was die cut, I brought in my snowflake embossing folder and I ran that through so I could get a little extra texture on all this white space. Now I'm going to put that shaker together. I start by cutting off some of the excess clear cardstock from my jar and then I add adhesive around the opening in the white cardstock. This is when I realized I did something wrong. I wanted my jar to be at the top of this white piece of cardstock, but I die cut it upside down. I decided not to redo it, to just leave this in to show you that we all make mistakes and it's an easy fix. I just rotated that piece of white cardstock around and now my snow globe will just be at the bottom of my card. Once I turned that oops into an okay, I started to put my snow globe together. I played a little bit with the placement of the trees and then I adhered the larger one flat down onto my background and that smaller one I used some mini dimensionals and popped that up on the background. Now because I did pop this up and I wanted some extra room for my shakers, when I brought in my big blue roll of foam tape in the quarter inch width, I doubled that up before I made my little frame for my shaker element. 
I went around that opening in the cardstock, just cutting small pieces to fill that as best as I can, making sure there were no gaps between the tape. Once that was all on there, I went ahead and pulled the release tape and set this to the side. Before I can adhere my jar to that background, I need to add my shaker bits. I put about a half a spoonful of each into the center of the blue stamped cardstock, and you'll notice it did kind of fly all over the place there, but once I had it kind of centered, I brought over my jar piece and got that adhered down. Now there was a little bit of extra static, so off screen I did take some time and I got out a dryer towel, and I don't know if it helped or not, but I just kind of ran it across the front of my piece and across the back because those styrofoam balls are pretty staticky. To finish the shaker piece, I decided to add some snowflakes to the front of that white piece of cardstock. I got out my art glitter glue and my Marvy jewel picker to help me do this. I placed a small dot of adhesive onto my card front and then I picked up the snowflake with a jewel picker and placed that right on that glue dot. I ended up putting I think six or seven snowflakes on the front. I just like how it added a little extra sparkle because it is quite a bit of white space there. You might have noticed my little stopper for my art glitter glue bottle, and let me tell you, I've mentioned it before, but this thing has been a lifesaver. A fellow YouTuber, I ordered it from her, and I am so glad that I did because I would have lost that stopper 20 times by now. If you're interested in finding out more about that, I will link her video below where she gives you details on how you can purchase one. The next step in the process was to get my shaker focal point onto that blue cardstock mat that I cut before. I added another doubled up strip of foam tape and then I added some adhesive behind the shaker jar. This then got centered onto the blue cardstock. Here's my second kind of oops. It wasn't a big deal, but originally I was gonna put this piece on a white card base, but it's a little hard to tell on screen, but my white card base is not the exact same white as the front of the card. So I decided I would pull out a couple other card stocks. I got out a gray and a blue. I really liked that blue, but there was nothing to tell the difference between the cardstock mat on the shaker and the blue card base. So I decided to pull back in those snowflake stamps and I stamped a white border around the outside of that card base. I did let this dry a little bit and while it was drying, I cut a small piece of white cardstock stamp some of those same snowflakes on the inside because this is going to help the card be pretty sturdy. This blue card sock that I have, it is pretty lightweight, so I thought this would help it stand up, especially with the weight of that shaker on the front. So that finished the card, and here are some close-up looks. I hope you enjoyed seeing how I made today's card and how I made some oopses into okays. If you did, as always, I appreciate a thumbs up. I can't wait to see your creations for Snow Way Man. Until my next video, I hope you're all having a crafty day. Bye bye. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch all the way to the end of the video. I hope now you'll consider clicking on one of the videos or playlists I have linked above. And if you're interested in any of the products or tools I used in today's video, I do have some links in the description box.